Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be sharing the ultimate list of dark academia book recommendations. So I wanted to make a list that was extremely comprehensive. I feel like I have seen a few videos online that do give dark academia recommendations, but most of them are a little bit dated. There have been new books that have been added since a lot of those have been created. And I wanted to share with you guys, if you are interested in dark academia, these are books that will satiate that craving. Just to give you a brief overview of what dark academia is, I didn't actually write anything down for this, but it's occurring to me that I should probably just describe it first. So just to give you an idea of what to expect, dark academia books are always set at some type of university. We are usually following a close-knit group of friends or a secret society or some kind of exclusive group of people. The academy or university that our story takes place at is always one that is very prestigious. It has a very intense focus on learning. Our characters are often very focused on the pursuit of knowledge. The kinds of themes that you would find in like ancient Greek tragedies. <laughs> we usually have themes of love, murder, obsession, and a lot of like the darker side of emotions. So not every single dark academia book has all of these, but they often have most of these. I have compiled a list of ones that I feel like encompass the true like feeling and essence of what it means to be a dark academia novel. So Let's get into the recommendations. So the first book that I obviously have to talk about is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. The Secret History is essentially the ultimate dark academia novel. It's arguably responsible for making the genre as popular as it is today, so it just feels wrong not to talk about this one first and foremost. This one follows a group of students in Vermont at Hampton College, and they are studying ancient Greek. This group of close-knit friends ends up murdering one one of the people within their group, and that is not a spoiler, you find out about that on page one and in the synopsis of the story. And then the rest of the book shows the events leading up to the murder and how everything unfolds after the act is committed. It is so beautifully written and such a fascinating read. I absolutely love the portions that take place within the classroom setting. So if you read one book from this list, it should definitely be The Secret History. The next book I want to talk about is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I actually read this one prior to reading The Secret History and it's remained a favorite book of mine throughout the many years since I first read it. If you can't tell by the number of copies sitting on my shelf behind me, I'm going to tell you exactly why right now. So similar to The Secret history, we are following a group of students, though this time they're Shakespeare scholars. And the book begins with Oliver Marks, who has just spent 10 years in jail for a murder that he may or may not have committed. On the day of his release, he is greeted by the detective who put him in jail, and the detective has come to revisit him because before he retires, he wants to find out the truth of what actually happened that night. Next up, and a more recent addition to this list, would be The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This is the first book within the Atlas trilogy, and we are following six students who are competing to become members of the Alexandrian Society. The Alexandrian Society is a secret society of magical academics who control all of the lost knowledge within the world. Induction into the society is basically a guarantee of wealth, power, and prestige, and each decade only six magicians are considered for initiation into the society, and of those six, only five of them will be inducted. I personally really love this book, and I'm so excited for the final book to come out in January. Next up, I have Babel or Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is another newer addition to the genre, and it is an epic historical fantasy taking place at Oxford University. In it, we are following Robin Swift, who sees Oxford as a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, but soon realizes that serving Babel is a betrayal to his motherland. Babel grapples with student revolutions, colonial resistance, and the use of language and translation as the dominating tool of 
the British Empire. A popular quote from this one is, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal, which it actually says on the sprayed pages of this book. <laughs> then I have Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, which is another dark academia novel, but this time with a fantasy twist. This one follows Alex Stern, who is a high school dropout. She is given a second chance and a place in the freshman class at Yale University. As a condition of her attendance, she is tasked with monitoring the secret societies within Yale, and while doing so, she uncovers their sinister occult activities. The next book is so new that I don't even have a physical copy of it just yet, and that is Blood Over Bright Haven by M. L. Wang. This is another fantasy novel, and we are following Sayona, who has devoted every waking moment of the last 20 years of her life to the study of magic, and this was all fueled by her mad desire to become the first woman ever inducted into the high magistrate. When she finally claws her way up to high mage, her colleagues make it abundantly clear that they are very unhappy that she is there and they want nothing to do with her. And in their first act of retaliation against her, instead of giving her a proper and qualified lab assistant, they give her a janitor. Fortunately for Siona, there is more to him than meets the eye, and their contentious partnership leads them to uncover an ancient secret that could change the course of magic forever. Then I have In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is a thriller that follows a group of six best friends who formed a very close-knit friendship while they were in college, and this book takes place 10 years later when the students are going back to the college for their 10-year reunion. But while they were there, one of their friends was murdered, and that murder has remained unsolved. Despite the time that has passed, not everyone is ready to move on, and someone in their midst has orchestrated their entire reunion weekend in order to trap the killer and uncover the truth of what actually happened. This book is told in dual timelines, and it touches on the darker sides of love, friendship, obsession, and ambition. Then we have These Violent Delights by Micah Nemerever. This one is compared to The Secret History, and it takes place in Pittsburgh in the 1970s. It follows a talented artist named Paul and the wealthy and effortlessly charming Julian, who Paul sees as his sole intellectual equal. These Violent Delights tells a feverishly taught Hitchcockian tale of two college students, each with his own troubled past, whose escalating obsession with one another leads to an act of unspeakable violence and an excavation of the unsettling depths of human desire. Then we have another newer release, and that is The Latinist by Mark Prinz. This one's actually a contemporary reimagining of the myth of Apollo and Daphne, and it's an exploration of power, ambition, and the intertwining of love and obsession. We're following Tessa, who has thrived at Oxford University under the tutelage of her esteemed classics professor, Christopher. She relies on Christopher for everything, but right before her thesis defense is due, she finds out that he's actually sabotaged her career. Driven by his obsession of Tessa, he's ensured that no other institution will offer her a position, which will keep Tessa at Oxford right with him. Tessa struggles to undo the damage while pursuing academics, and during the process, she ends up making a discovery relating to a Latin poet that could change the course of academics. I can't seem to find my copy at the moment, but the next book that I want to talk about is Bunny by Mona Awad. Bunny is something of a cult classic, and it's been described by readers as one of the strangest books that they've ever read. It's a darkly funny gothic novel following a lonely graduate student named Samantha, who's drawn into a clique of rich girls at her New England university. This group of girls calls each other bunnies, and after Samantha receives an invitation to join them, she decides to accept and finds herself falling down a rabbit hole. Bunny blends a sharp satire with fairy tale horror. Next we have The Maidens by Alex Michelides. This one is a thriller set at Cambridge University and we are following Mariana who is a group therapist that is absolutely certain that the charming Greek tragedy professor named Edward is a murderer. He is adored by staff and students, and most especially by the secret society of female students known as the Maidens. Mariana becomes obsessed with the Maidens when one of them, who is a friend of her niece, turns up murdered. Then when a second body is found, Mariana's obsession with proving Edward's guilt becomes like next level and spirals out of control. So again, we've got a strong obsession theme here. Then we have The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This one 
hits a little closer to home as it takes place in New York City. And it's following Anne Stilwell, who is an intern that's hoping to spend her summer at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but instead she's assigned to the Cloisters. The Cloisters is a Gothic museum and garden, renowned for its collection of medieval and Renaissance art. It's there that Anne is drawn into a small circle of enigmatic researchers, including the museum's curator, who's convinced that the history of tarot cards holds the key to unlocking contemporary fortune telling. This one involves a dangerous game of power, toxic friendships, and ambition. Then we have A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is a fantastical dark academia novel that is set at Oxford University and we are following a centuries-old vampire, a spellbound witch, and the mysterious manuscript that draws them together. Diana Bishop, our witch, comes from a long and distinguished line of witches, but she herself wants nothing to do with sorcery. When she unwittingly calls up a bewitched alchemical manuscript in the stacks of Oxford's Bodleian Library, she quickly returns it after reading a few lines, but its presence has caused a stirring in the underworlds, and hordes of demons, witches, and vampires start to descend upon the library. Everyone is coming in pursuit of that manuscript that has a spell on it and Diana is the only one that can break it. Next up is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is a horror comedy that is centered around a cursed New England boarding school for girls. The story begins in 1902 at the Brookhans School for Girls and it is following two students who are so obsessed with a daring young writer that they form their own secret society which they call the Plain Bad Heroines heroine society. Their bodies are later discovered at a nearby apple orchard where their meetings would take place, along with a copy of the book that fueled their obsession. But it isn't until three more mysterious deaths occur on the property that Brookant shutters its doors for good. Now, over a century later, Brookant is making headlines again because the new author publishes a breakout novel celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. This inspires a controversial horror film adaptation, but as filming begins, the past and present become grimly intertwined. Then we've got A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is the first book in a trilogy, and it's set at a magical and deadly boarding school called the Scholomance. At the Scholomance, failure means certain death for students until one student named L, short for Galadriel, begins to unlock its many secrets. L harbors a powerful, deadly magic that could very easily handle the monsters that prowl the halls. However, the only problem is that it might also kill the other students. Next up is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This one takes place at Catherine House, a school of higher learning that is hidden deep within the woods of rural Pennsylvania, and this school has produced some of the world's best minds. Once admitted, students are required to give a full three years of their life, summers included, to Catherine House, where they are completely removed from the outside world, including all of their family and friends. In this newest class, we are following Inez, who is a dangerously curious undergraduate whose rebelliousness leads her to discover a shocking secret involving an exclusive circle of students and the dark truth beneath her school's promise of prestige. Next, I have For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This is a psychological thriller that is set at the prestigious school Belmont Academy, and we are following Mr. Crutcher, who is a teacher there, and he feels as though it's his own personal responsibility to make sure that everything goes the way that it's supposed to for everyone's own good. Little things start happening at Belmont. We have a teacher that is sick. We have kind of an un hinged ex-student surface, and nobody's really suspicious until the events become increasingly frequent. One thing I love about this one is that you get to be inside the mind of the killer, and while it is a dark academia novel, I would say that this one is definitely on the more humorous side, so it doesn't have the exact feel of some of the other more serious ones. Then we have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This one follows an exceptional English professor named Scarlett Clark, and every year Dr. Clark searches for one of the worst men at the university and she plots their demise. Thanks to her meticulous planning, she has evaded anyone's suspicions thus far, but going into this novel she is planning one of her biggest kills yet, and it is then that the school starts probing into the growing body count on campus. Dr. Clark insinuates herself into the investigation and she charms the woman in charge, but 
she ends up making a big mistake that could cause her to be implicated in the crimes. And then there are two new releases that I want to highlight because they are coming out very soon. I feel as though they should be included. Both of them sound like potential favorite books for me personally, so I just want to talk about them. The first one being A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. In this book, we are following a girl named Effie who, since childhood, has been haunted by visions of the fairy king. She's found solace in the pages of a book that tells the story of a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. During her first year at the prestigious architectural school that she attends, the author's family announces a contest that they are holding to have somebody redesign the author's home. Effie feels certain that this is her destiny, but when she arrives along with her rival, a literature scholar who is studying the author's papers in an effort to prove that he was a fraud, when the pair arrive at Hereth Manor, they are met with a musty, decrepit estate that is on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. As the pair investigate the reclusive author's legacy, they're met with dark forces, both mortal and magical, that are conspiring against them. And then the other new release that I want to mention is Curious Tides by Pascal LaSalle. This is another dark academia fantasy, and we are following Emery, who is a mage, attending Aldrin College for Lunar Magics. Emery has always had mediocre healing abilities until one treacherous night in the Dovermere Sea Caves, which leaves a group of her classmates dead and she as the sole survivor. Now Emery is plagued by strange and impossible powers that no healer should possess. She enlists the help of Boz, the brother of one of the drowned students, but they're faced with even more questions when the supposedly drowned students start washing ashore, very much alive, only to pretty immediately die another horrible magical death. Emery must unravel the truth behind the secret society that she believes could be responsible for her classmates' deaths. So those are all of the Dark Academia books that I have to recommend. This is my definitive list. There are a bunch of other books that technically have some of these elements, but I don't believe they fall into the Dark Academia category. If you have any other recommendations that you feel like do fit here, please leave them down below in the comments because I'm always looking to read more Dark Academia. But that is all that I have for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and found something new to read, and I will see you soon in a new one. Bye!